Hello everyone, welcome back to Steel Forest Building and Forge. Today my friends I have an unboxing and review video for you. Today we're going to be unboxing my new Husky Toolbox. Now I got this guy actually for work, not for here in my home shop. Uh, but I figured I'd go ahead and do an unboxing video for you guys anyway. Hopefully this is going to be the last toolbox I'm ever going to need. So let's just go ahead and get straight on with the unboxing. I did notice this hole down here. Hopefully that's not a big scratch. Shows this box. So I am a welder by trade, and a lot of the PPE I have is fairly large. And this particular box has a large cabinet inside. Woo wee! Look at that guy. This is actually one of the more conservative models. They had bigger ones. Initial impressions. Oh. Well, the doors are all scratched up and damaged. All right, everyone, we are back. So I contacted Home Depot. Um, we went through a bit of a lengthy process, but eventually we did resolve the problem with this box. You can see down here, this drawer is dented in. I'm missing some paint here and there's some scratches all over the place. So uh, I asked for a partial discount. They took $100 off the price of this toolbox. So overall, it's water the bridge and I'm happy. Uh, if you'd like some more details about how this went down because it got a little bit ugly, uh, stay tuned to the end of the video. Let's keep on going with the review. In this drawer here, there's a bunch of stuff. So we got, if I guess, this is probably the shelf that hangs off the side. As well as a key that is hooked on. As well as, it looks like, all the mats to go in the drawer. The drawers, nice things about these drawers, they have these built-in actuators. You can't slam the drawers and your tools go flying everywhere. So even if you slam it, it slowly closes. Oh, it is a little bit heavy. And yes, that looks like that is the side table. Again, missing paint right here. Just a little spot, not too bad. That table actually feels pretty sturdy. They have a support down here, a piece of form channel that goes down the edge. So that's nice. That actually feels pretty sturdy. So uh, I like this side table so far. That's probably a mounting plate that goes on the side if I had to guess. Alright, as I mentioned before, this unit's a little bit different. This has a nice big side cabinet. It looks like that is locked. A lot of my PPE is fairly big. So I want to make sure I have room for that. And that is about the size I was hoping it would be. And there's also an adjustable shelf in here. Awesome, that is perfect. Here is the instruction manual. And then I believe these are the casters. got the handle. All right, so for the welds in here, uh, there is no weld on the outside of this to speak of. It looks like it's just four little tacks. Right here, one, two, three, four. Honestly, those just look like fusion welds, like with a TIG torch. Not a big fan of that. We'll see how that holds up over time. All right, here are the casters. I spent a lot of time with casters in uh, manufacturing. These aren't too bad. These are definitely rated heavy enough for this toolbox here. We have two fixed casters and two swivel casters with locks on them. Okay, so I'm definitely satisfied with those guys. All right, so that's the unboxing for the bottom portion tool chest. We'll go ahead and move on to the upper portion. Gonna do some quick house cleaning, then we'll get started on that. 
All right, minor housekeeping is finished. Let's go ahead and unbox the top portion of the toolbox. Now, one of the big selling points for me was that this has a large, I'm gonna call it hatch or hutch at the top of the toolbox. I like the fact that you can open it up, put your power tools in there, whatever, and they can stand upright. portion here is the top of this toolbox. Nothing is damaged, thank God. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. Oh yeah, look at that. That is gorgeous. Okay, looks like we got more keys. We got more foam inserts. Now this was another feature I really like about this box. So there is a built-in power strip on the unit here on this side. What you can do is you can take this cord here, plug it into that power strip, plug that power strip into an outlet, and you have another power strip in here with USB charging. So you can put in any tool that you need that needs to sit here and charge. You can put a charger in here with batteries, you can put your phone or wireless speakers if you're listening to music. This baby does it all. You don't have to worry about any of your stuff getting stolen. There's that plug there. Oh, look at those handles. We're moving that box around. That is nice. I didn't even notice that feature when I was buying this on both sides. You know, for, I believe it's 22 gauge, that's not too bad. 22 gauge is definitely a little bit on the wider side. Um, I've seen much bigger things built with 22 gauge steel. All right, so that's the unboxing portion. We're going to do some more house cleaning, and then we're going to start putting this big boy together. All right, so step one is installing the handle, which comes with this... Uh, a wrench tool, which I kind of find ironic, because if you don't have any tools, why am I getting a toolbox? Whatever. These bolts are just slightly larger than that hole. There's a lot of play in there. There are no washers included in this. I think I'll be putting some... Well, there's not really any room for washers either. If there was, I'd probably put my own on. Alright, that's pretty sturdy. Alright, so next to the casters. And that is a big boy. Seems to move nice and smooth. Let's see, let's get this shelf in here. Gorgeous. That'll fit a welding hood, no problem. There's also some brackets here for wrapping these extension cords on. We'll go ahead and install those as well. So next, side table installation. So they're smart about this. They knew that hanging this by yourself would be difficult. The top holes on this table are actually hangers. So that way you can hang it on and then bolt on or screw on the second set of bolts while this is on the toolbox already. All right, let's take a look at this side table. This thing is massive. I just measured it. It is 31 and a half inches wide. And I'm 5'10", and that sits at almost the perfect height. It's almost the same height as my workbench here. And when you want to take it down, you push up on this guy here, which actually takes quite a bit of effort there. Hmm. Magnets, hold that in. Fold straight down. Pretty nice. Try that again. 
that takes a lot to get that in there. Hmm. Looks like that puts a lot of strain on these things here, these bolts, and I don't know if I like that very much. All right, so that's it for the bottom box. Next part is putting the top unit on here. All right, got the top box on here. Don't ask me how. Last part, these same brackets that were down here, now we have to install up here. All right, so this thing's all put together. Now, I'm 5'10", so that, that gives some uh, kind of perspective on how big this thing is. There you go. This toolbox is almost as tall as I am. It is a beast. Now, it feels fairly heavy duty. It's not super heavy duty, but for your average shop, it's fine. It moves pretty easily. The casters are nice, well built. Now, uh, the top and bottom section of this box actually have different keys. So here, this opens the hutch. All your drawers. And they're a little messed up because of how <laughs> I get this thing on here. But all these drawers, all open nice and smooth. Every single one of these drawers comes with a liner. And not just that, look how deep these drawers are. I mean, though, it, that is massive. I am not sure I'm going to fill all these drawers up at work. <clears throat> the cabinet down here, nice and spacious. Lots of room for like a welding helmet and various other kinds of PPE. This bottom drawer here, ugh. Very deep, uh, very big. Again, big tools down in there. Great. This one's also a fairly deep drawer. Then you kind of got your average thin ones here. Then another big drawer here in the middle. And uh, when these lock, one thing I like about this, there's no additional bars that you need to install on this unit to lock it. Turn your key. And now, None of these open. And down here we have a separate key. And now we're all locked down here. And unfortunately, well actually it looks like these keys are all the same. Well, what do you know? The instructions said that they probably would not match, but it looks like they do, so that's great. All right, if you look in here, here is one of the main features that kind of drew me to this. One. You can take any cordless speakers you may have, just put them right in here, open this thing up, and it's going to shoot all that sound out right into your shop. Um, you've got a surge uh, or a power strip here with two USB chargers. You can turn this strip on and off, and this actually plugs in to the side here. And right here you can see we have this cord all wrapped up. You can just simply unwrap it with the provided brackets they've got here. Plug this guy in either directly to a... Uh, power strip or the power plug it in right there and then take this cord right here then plug this one in to an outlet somewhere else you can power that on and off you're good to go now this cord I would say it's a little on the short side but I mean if you're in a shop you've got an extension cord laying around somewhere and uh, for this top box here you have these nice big heavy duty handles which I'm a big fan of those uh, were very nicely done. So let's go ahead and go back to the front of the box and I'll give my final thoughts. So here are my final thoughts for this toolbox. I love this toolbox. I am so glad I purchased it. I love this large storage cabinet here. This enormous hutch, which is great. It has these built-in actuators, which just push it straight up. This side table here is massive I gotta be honest I don't think I'll really need it that much I and mean, this thing is huge um, I do have a rolling cart at work that I keep my welder on but still it's a nice little option to have for just whatever I'm working here I just want to go straight to this table do something and go back to my toolbox um, it moves nice and smooth the handle here feels great those little welds on the inside worry me just a hair but at the end of the day I'm a welder so I'm not that worried this power strip on the outside and on the inside is fantastic, especially the fact that it has USB chargers here. Now, there is one thing I wish they would have done. I wish they would have put these chargers here on the same side as this table. If that would have been possible, I think it would have uh, 
maybe made this setup just a little bit sweeter because then you could put something on this table, charge it, or even have a buddy that doesn't have access to a power strip charge their stuff on that as well. Now, as far as what happened with Home Depot, here's the whole story for those that are interested. So I bought this online, waited about a week and a half, came to the store and picked it up. The uh, sales associate there picked up one side of this box, I picked up the other, we loaded it in my car. I got home, this came in two boxes, and I saw that large gash in the box at the bottom. And unfortunately, this was dented here, scratched here, it scratched in a couple of other spots, and I wasn't happy. And I wasn't happy because I know the sales associate saw that gash. And I have worked in retail before, and it is a policy that if you have a damaged box like that, you're supposed to open it with your customer so they can either take, accept it, or reject it. So that was number one, kind of strike one. So I get it home, and I see that gash. Now, they expect me to take this back to the store. Uh, no. Okay, this should have been taken care of at the store. So I called, talked to a manager, and uh, <laughs> at first I uh, kind of was met with some uh, uh, unappreciated questioning. So when I mentioned that I can't get this back in my car by myself, uh, this manager asked me, well, how'd you get in your car in the first place? Well, the way I got in my car in the first place was your sales associate helped me get it in the car. So whatever she was insinuating by that question, you know, we can guess, but didn't make me happy. So she promised me that I would get a call from someone that day or maybe the next day about scheduling a pickup. So Thursday went by, Friday went by, Saturday went by, Sunday went by, Monday went by, nothing. Now I, I, I can figure why they wouldn't call me on a Sunday. So Monday, I called the store manager. Store manager uh, didn't answer his extension. In fact, according to the, the directory, there wasn't an extension. This came on a little card with my receipt saying, if I have any problems at all, please call him up. Call him up, nothing. So I finally called the corporate office. The corporate office, I actually talked to someone. This person was beyond helpful. They didn't ask any intrusive questions at all, just uh, how, what happened when you picked it up what was the damage like, and how much would I like uh, reimbursed? As I asked, instead of having it picked up, just give me a partial reimbursement and I'll be happy. She asked me for an amount. What do you think would be fair? And I said, $100 sounds fair. So they knocked $100 off of it. So all in all, this toolbox cost me $500. So to me, that's fair. Now, would I recommend this box? Absolutely. I love it. Um, I went through all the features that it has. I recommend it to anyone who needs kind of a medium-sized toolbox at their work or their home shop. Um, and at the end of the day, in my opinion, uh, Home Depot customer service redeemed themselves. So thank you, Home Depot. And again, Betty, you are an angel. If you happen to see this, thank you again. Well, folks, that is the end of this video. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that thumbs up button. And oh my gosh, guys, we finally made it to 1,000 subscriptions. This will be the last video I make without investing in a microphone as promised. So down the line in the future, the how to weld videos are coming. That's the next project. So keep an eye out for those. And again, that is going to be a detailed explanation on all the different welding processes I practice. TIG, MIG, and stick. So thank you for watching, folks. Please like, please subscribe, please share this video, and I'll see you next time.